Hey everybody, Accurate here. Welcome to The Hunter Call of the Wild. It's going to be a beginner tutorial for those of you that just got the game. You're a little bit confused, a little overwhelmed. Hopefully this helps you guys out. So first things first, you're going to you're going to land here and I th I think you still start here if you uh if you uh, restart the game have a brand new character. This is uh Leighton Lake District. And this is area is called Balmont. So down at the bottom right there's going to be this compass. As I move around, it moves. And that little green directional cone you see is, isn't, it's not an animal tracker. I saw somebody thinking that that was that, that's what it was in the, in the, uh, in the comments. But this is a uh, wind direction indicator. So right now, my smell is being blown that way. If I'm trying to hunt something that is in that direction and it has a really good keen sense of smell, I probably need to adjust the way I approach the animal. Otherwise, it's going to smell me probably before I see it. If we're in uh, any type of uh, any type of dense or even moderately dense vegetation, so next to that is going to show what item I'm holding. Um, if you can't see an item right now, hit H. H will holster whatever you're holding and hide it. If you hit it again. Pops right out. So right there, I'm hunt holding my smartphone, also called a hunter mate. And it also shows what direction I'm pointing on the map. You can't zoom or zo zoom in or zoom out of that, as far as I know. Next to that is a skill. That's going to be something that you unlock later as you level up and earn skill points and perk points. Don't worry about that right now. Below that is a green bar. That's going to be your health meter. There are certain animals in the game that can attack you if they're sort of trapped. Uh, they can't trample you, run into you. You can fall off a cliff. You can crash your ATV if you have that downloadable content available, which I highly recommend getting the ATV downloadable content. It makes traveling and unlocking and getting to certain areas so much easier. But, hey, if you're happy walking around, more power to you. Below that is a little heart indicator. That's your heart rate. So the more you run around and the longer you hold your breath as you're aiming down your sights of your weapons, the faster that will beat and eventually it'll make it really hard for you to get a nice clean steady shot next to that is like a little uh, football looking icon that is uh, american football icon that is how visible you are so right now we're pretty visible if we pro if we go crouch we're less visible if we go prone we're pretty well hidden still slightly vid visible but if we go over here to, let me run over here to this tree and hide in here. As you can see, that line is even smaller now. That makes us basically invisible. If an animal does walk up to us, uh, it, it's it's going to smell us and still see us. It can't, you can't, you know, if it bumps into you, it's going to run. But they will come very close when you're that well hidden at that point. Next to that is a little speaker icon. That's how loud we're being right now. So right now, we're pretty we're stomping around, not really worried about much. As you walk through different uh, types of terrain, or you speed up using shift key to run. Again, I'm using uh, PC and keyboard and mouse, if I haven't said so already. But as you walk through different types of vegetation, you can see that the uh, icons change. And uh, it adds a little red bar to it, so that means you're even louder. But uh, white means that you're uh, it's sort of in, there's two different levels of sound white is sort of like the lower range and then when you start seeing red appear that means louder so there's louder if i jump you can see that for, for a second there i was i had two two red bars going on so all right now that we got the movement and uh that all covered let's hit escape or m to get to the uh to the main menu here this is going to be the map that we're on um i already hunted a uh, deer that was pretty much teed up for you. It should be teed up for you right about where I'm standing, actually. And uh, you can take a shot there. Just be aware that even if you do a great shot, that ammo type, uh, it's soft. I think I think they start you off with soft tip ammo. It doesn't penetrate very well, and it's going to be really hard for you to hit an organ. Well, I had a heart shot, perfect line, perfectly lined up for a heart shot, but it didn't even make it to the heart. So it just hit it as a flesh wound. I had to track it all the way up here. And wherever you take your final fatal shot at, it's going to add a little uh, on an animal. It, as soon as it dies, it'll put a little blob of uh, a circle of uh, purple 
uh, in that area, and that indicates hunting pressure. So other animals are li less likely to come into that area. And as you hunt more and more in a certain area, if you keep sort of like camping that area uh, from a hunting stand or something like that, it, this will keep increasing, getting brighter and brighter and brighter. And the way to eliminate hunting pressure is to hunt other areas. There's a finite amount of pressure you can put on the map. And as you spread it around, the oldest areas will start to dissipate. Okay. Mission log. This is where you uh, track your missions. You have story missions, side missions, and completed missions. It's pretty self-explanatory. Inventory. This is what you're carrying in your backpack. This isn't what you buy in the store and what you've unlocked in the game. Uh, this is just what you decided to take with you from your cabin on this particular walkabout hunt. Okay. So right now, and, and there is there is a, a weight limitation to how much you can carry. You can upgrade that with different types of backpacks and so on and so forth. Just beware that when you do use a backpack, it does significantly increase your visibility and your sound print. So we have the Ranger 243 over here. I'm going to show you how to load this up. So when you start off, I don't know if they put one here or not. They might already set you up with the weapon. But if not, and you want to change weapons, or if you take it away, when you put it back, it no longer has ammo and it no longer has a scope. So you're going to take, need to take ammo. And as you, you can, should be able to look at this and determine what your ammo is. If you can't figure it out there, just scroll over everything, kind of watch, watch your ammo uh, box here. And it will start to glow with a, uh, an outline when you do get to a compatible type of ammo. Same goes for sights. See those two sights are compatible, but this bright sight ranger bow sight, range finder bow sight is not. So I am going to start with the uh, the basic site because I think that's what they start you with as well. All right, lures. You have different types of lures you can buy. This is what I happen to be carrying in my backpack right now. Uh, scent eliminator. I think you do start with a scent eliminator. So it, it's debatable how effective that actually is. Don't think because you spray that you're like you don't have to worry about your the wind direction at all. Uh, animals will still be able to smell you. Um, it should should just be reduced. And there is a timer on that as well. So yeah. Each use lasts 30 minutes. There you go. Okay. So skills, as you level up, you will get a skill point. And then the next time you level up, it'll be perk point. And then go back and forth. Skill, perk, skill, perk. And you can select different types of skills and perks. Anything in the green, you're going to need to... These, these need to be activated. You can only activate one at a time. Between the skills and the perks, you can only have one active at a time. Everything else is passive. They're already working for you. Like right here, soft feet. I have two levels of that. So it reduces noise generated when moving through foliage, such as grass and leaves. The second level that I picked up reduced the noise generated when moving through larger vegetation, such as bushes and shrubs. You still make noise, just reduced a little bit. So right now I have weather prediction selected. If I wanted to do wind prediction, right click on it, activate. Now... I can use it down there in the bottom right. You see that that F key uh, has uh, is is uh, what I would use to start it. So there we go. It has a cooldown period of 600 seconds, but it's showing me at each different time during the day in military time which direction and what speed the the wind's going to be at at that particular time. So if I'm about to stock up on a, a large herd or a specific animal, I can look into the future using this and tell how the wind's going to behave. So. That's a, that's a little bit advanced. As you can see, I've gone through a lot of skills just to get to that point. But I just wanted to show you how that worked specifically with these active skills. Same for perks. Perks are going to be uh, weapons specific. The only thing I think that isn't weapon specific is handguns. And is this one because this is kind of, this is kind of handy actually. Uh, you, can act you can activate it and while you're looking down the, the site of any weapon, you can sort of get an estimate of the range. It's not as accurate as the actual handheld range finder, laser range finder that you can unlock, but it, it, it helps you get dialed in until you're used to it. So like, let's say I want to look over here at this rock right here. Let's say this is an animal right in front of this rock. I'll just put F1, my crosshairs are on it, and it gives me a range of 255 to 317 meters. So I can uh, adjust accordingly uh, for bullet drop, wind direction, you know, that sort of thing. All right, Codex is basically your Wikipedia for the entire game. Um, I usually don't use the maps because they're just sort of like the history of the area, the lore, the NPCs back, back uh, story and things like that. What I do use is the Hunter Profile card to kind of see where I'm at as far as my leveling up. Uh, it shows you what you're wearing, a specific uh, outfit you're wearing. The outfit you're wearing does has no bearing on 
your visibility or anything like that. You can wear whatever you want. As far as I know, n- nothing will change. Now, there is a ghillie suit that came out or that is coming out with Mississippi Acres. I don't know if the ghillie suit actually reduces your visibility or not, but other than the ghillie suit, everything else, as far as I know, doesn't affect your visibility. So have fun with it. Hunting logs is just going to show your history and your later latest harvests. So we'll get rid of that. I'll show you one of these here real quick. Uh, let's do Lake and Lake District. This is right here. It's just going to show the, the region that you're in, that you've unlocked. Everything else is grayed out because I haven't unlocked anything on this map yet. Okay, and then down here, this is the one I use the most. This is going to be the wildlife tab. Now, if I go out hunting and I'm sitting at my cabin and I have a storage locker that has all my equipment that I've ever bought, I'm going to go, okay, well, I want to go hunt red deer. Mm, I can't remember what type of gun and what type of ammunition I need to use for red deer to make it an ethical kill because if you use too small of a round or too large of a round, you're going to get penalized by that. And you might, instead of getting like a gold trophy level, it might be, it'll be reduced to like, say, silver. Or if you have a diamond, it'll be reduced to gold. It'll, it'll drop down a level if you use the wrong ammo type. So I, what I do is I come in here and I go red deer. All right, let's click on this. It also gives you some other good information as well. But right here is what I'm usually most interested in. Class 6 ammo and it also, uh, yeah, so it's recommended equipment. Red deer collar and red deer scent. Pretty Pretty easy. It also shows when they're most active and uh, how they like to travel, whether they like to they, they roll solo or they like to roll with a group. Uh, very good sense of smell, so I'm going to have to be paying attention to my wind direction. And uh, what type of habitat they like to be found in, forest and mountainous terrain. Okay. And whether or not I need to be worried about being attacked by them. Okay. So the class six ammo is going to be represented here with the six. So when we highlight this animal, we're going to see... A, a, a six next to it that's not like a score or anything like that that's the ammo type all right so now what am i carrying we'll go back to our inventory i'll hi- not my rifle i won't look here for my ammo uh level i will look here and down here at the bottom you see recommend at bottom right you see recommended classes two through six if we were hunting red deer i could use this rifle because it includes six all right Shows effective range, penetration, expansion, and all that sort of stuff. Let's go do some hunting, folks. As I walk up towards this uh, lookout station, I will keep my eyes peeled. And if anything uh, pops out that's worth uh, worth tracking, we will go for it. All right, folks. So as I was running into this area, I got this question mark over here. This means it's some sort of uh, location of interest that I just happen to come within 100 meters of. Uh, so it pops up and it says, Hey, there's something over here. And now I know from past experience, this is going to be like a little, uh, landmark and you go over here, it gives you a little information, a little lore about the area and you get some experience points. Uh, you really don't get anything from it. It doesn't give you, uh, any help as far as hunting the animals. But what else I also found was I found these little glowing tracks here. Now, now you can change the color of these by going to system game and then inactive track color white. So let's say I want to make these, uh, Pink, whatever that is. So I can make these pink if I want to. It's very beneficial because some maps are snow maps. You don't want to have white on a snow map. I don't think they are by default, but you can pick whatever works best for your eyes. If you're colorblind to particular, you know, shades of whatever, definitely will help out a lot. So I'm going to leave it like that. And for this particular map, uh, cyan is one that I typically don't see. Uh, anywhere else. So I'm going to keep uh, my active tracks, uh, the cyan color. Um, these are collectible outline colors like Easter eggs, uh, so on and so forth. And uh, dog, co- you could change. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty customizable. Make sure you come into the game setting and uh, just sort of check this all out. I'm going to get rid of the mission system actually right now. Tutorials and hints on, I'm going to turn that off as well. There we go. Okay. So I'm going to look at this. This doesn't look like, this looks like rabbit. Yeah, it is. Very old droppings. You will get that information. If you're tracking whatever animal it says very old, you're pretty much safe to walk normally, unless you're looking for other animals in the area. But uh, let's head on over here to this landmark. And I'm just going to run. Running is not the way to hunt. If you're running around everywhere, you're going to have a hard time finding animals. Unless you run to tracks and then follow them, which is basically what I'm doing. I'm just running up to... Uh, to the lookout that's that's why i'm running at this particular point because i really don't care about hunting at this particular moment a written note so there we go left this note here for someone to find whoever you are walk in peace go north and find the closest outpost 
Can't miss the curious tombstones close by. All right, so there we go. And you're going to see we get a little bit of experience points for this. There we go. All right, climb to the top, and there's like a little informational uh, display. Click on that, and uh, you get a nice little cutscene, and it'll reveal some uh, places on the map for us to go check out. Sorry, it's so foggy, but uh, can't control the weather. Anyway, it would look a lot prettier had it not been so foggy. New locations added to map. More experience points. All right, great. So, it, on my map, it, it's going to keep showing where my... Uh, the tracks that I've looked at are at. And it also... With some of the skills that I have, it's going to show a line with a direction of travel. That is due to my skill level and some of the unlocks that I have. Normally, what you'll have is you'll just have your tracks on the map. Okay. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom out here. Now, you can see we started off with, like, just a little little area that we've explored, right? Now, once I unlock this lookout, it unlocked all this area. So, now it looks like it's all visible. We have all these different areas to check out the hunting cabins are going to be shown immediately and uh, I'm just going to go ahead and you know what I kind of like we're really close to this one let's just go ahead and head over to this hunting cabin right click on the map place waypoint right click remove waypoint go from there because right now if I look this way I can't, I can't I know which way I'm kind of going I have to keep going back and forth to my map or follow this trail and then all that but what I like to do is sort of put a icon close to it. I can see exactly where I need to go now. And we'll head on down. Don't jump off of here. You'll hurt yourself. I mean, it probably won't kill you, but <laughs> if a bear finds you in a, in a state like that, you're going to die. It won't kill your character. You won't lose everything. But what will happen is it'll restart you at one of the cabins and your hunt will be over. So all right, let's head on down here. This is uh, all going to be bear stuff here. And this might be a little need zone for the bear. So let's check it out. It doesn't look like the disturbed vegetation. That looked different. So let's see here. we got a white-tailed jackrabbit need zone. So between 4 and 7.30, there's a very high probability that there should be some rabbits around here each day. Now, the animals, this is how they behave. They, they're either traveling or they're at a need zone. There's three types of need zones. There's eating, drinking, and rest. So as you discover those, they'll tell you the different time periods. You can go online and see when different need zones are active for different animals. People have made up like Excel spreadsheets showing you exactly when they should be in what need zone. But again, that's not my style of play. If you want to do that, more power to you. But uh, I prefer to keep moving for the purposes of this tutorial going to unlock this cabin, show you how to get equipped, show you how to buy things in the store once you start harvesting animals. And uh, we're going to go out and hunt our first uh, first animal here in a minute. So we're going to go up to the flagpole, hit E to claim it. All right. Now, no matter where we're at on the map, we can right-click on our, our cabin on the map and fast travel to it and get there immediately. And it doesn't cost us any money, and it doesn't cost us any time. So, let me give you a little tour of the digs. You go up to this door, open it. Uh, you don't have to eat or drink or do any of that stuff. If you want to uh, skip ahead in time, let's say you want to do some night hunting, hunting you can rest here. It's going to cost you 250 in-game dollars. You can pick exactly when you want to wake up. If you want to go till the next day, you can do that. Switch it up here to, uh, let's go to, I like to wake up at 5.45 a.m. So there we go. Each time you rest, it will increase the amount of money it is to do another rest. There is a cool down. Once it cools down, it'll drop down to like, I think it's 180. And then you'll be able to, you know, but don't just keep resting over and over and over again. You're just going to waste money. I'm going to head down down towards the lake because animals like to, like water, and uh, there's a pretty good chance it also opens up a lot too. You know what? Let's let's head on over to this cabin and plan on unlocking that and do some hunting on the way. So 
So this is my cache. This is this is where you can access the store and buy things. Okay, a lot of these are unlocked because I haven't achieved the high the a high enough rifle score yet. Again, like I said, my daughter started over this character about a month and a half ago. So and then when I did the promo video, they gave me all this money and skill points. Well, I'm gonna grab the elk collar because we do have elk on this map, but it's for they're typically further north. I just know that from experience. Uh, red deer is one I really like to hunt, and I'm waiting for that collar to become available. Roe deer, I already have it. These check marks indicate the ones you already have. Uh, wild boar, I'm definitely getting that. I didn't realize that I skilled up high enough for that. I think it was 15, and I just unlocked it. I'm a, yeah, must have just unlocked it just now. Uh, same with the uh, the other one that I bought. Okay, so when we're here, there's one more thing I want to show you. When we're here, this is the store, okay? So you buy stuff in the store, and then it becomes available in your storage. So this is my locker, that of things that I bought at the store over here. Okay, so I have all this stuff. All right, I got a bunch of junk. All right, tents and stands and all kinds of goodies. This is my total carry capacity, 23. Okay, if I want to wear a backpack, you can buy that in the store. You have to buy it in the store. Go down here. Backpacks. You have to buy these in the store. Um, it tells you the additional carry capacity, the increased noise level, increased visibility. Uh, what I use these for is transporting, say, a tent or something large somewhere. Okay. And then once I actually go out for the hunt, the walkabout for the hunt, I get rid of this thing. So you go here to character to equip and unequip your backpack. Right here you go. Large, medium, no backpack. Then make sure you hit accept. Okay. So right now... I'm going to go with uh, no backpack, and I'll see if I can carry a tent with me. I might carry a backpack. Depends. Well, since you guys can't do it, I, I probably won't. A garage, if you have the ATVs unlocked, you can come here and request your ATV. It costs nothing. And uh, if you leave it out in the wild and you fast travel to a cabin, you can come in here and it will recover it for you for free. So you just request it. Vehicle has arrived. Turn around, and boom, there's your ATV makes a ton of noise so don't expect to go rolling into an area and then have any animals interested in being hunted at all in that area because it ain't going to happen but if you're looking to unlock a bunch of uh lookouts real fast or travel from one specific area to another specific area and then hunt away from where you where you uh approach from yeah use the atv i use the atv quite a bit kennel if you unlock uh the dogs you can uh, purchase a dog when you buy the downloadable content you're going to want to have 45,000 in cash. Otherwise, you're going to have to grind a little bit and get some uh, get some kills under your belt, earn some money before you can even purchase the dog. Okay. Once you purchase the dog, as you use the dog, it will level up with you, become more effective, and uh, you know you can pet it and do all kinds of stuff. So I'll set it as active just to show you what it looks like. Where's Rusty at? There he is. Hey, Rusty. So what I do when I'm near my dog, or even away from my dog... I can be away from my dog. Hit B, and it brings up a radio menu. And then uh, I can say heal, track, whatever. So I'll say, come on over here, Rusty. And then what I'll do is I can praise Rusty. There we go. So Rusty's happy that I just did like a cat call sort of whistle to it. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to put Rusty away again because I don't I don't have... Uh, I'm trying to I'm trying to do this as close to a, a new player as possible, but I just want to show you some of these features. Okay, guys, had a little issue with my uh, my inventory. Got it sorted out. Somehow it emptied my inventory completely, and I had to restock everything. I I remember now that you guys, as I was looking through, as I was re-equipping everything, you guys do get the deer bleat collar to start, which is good for uh, black tail and white tail. So we're gonna make use of that. Glad I remembered that because. This will actually help us out a little bit. Help you guys out as you kind of see how they react to it. But uh, let's head on down here. I did a little hunting down here and, and got a blacktail doe. Uh, it was nothing worth writing home about at all. All right, let's head on over this way towards this cabin. And as we go, we'll see if we can maybe find a blacktail, whitetail, something worth calling in with the bleak collar. Because that is going to be your bread and butter. I also, uh, when I had my little snafu with the uh, with the inventory... I had to restart the game. Uh, I went ahead and picked up the um, soft point bullet so that my ammo will match what your ammo is as well. So I should be 100% in line with what you got. I think you guys get a pistol and a shotgun now. I would recommend sticking with the uh, rifle 
for shooting the, the deer at this point. Um, I don't even know if you have buckshot. You might just have birdshot at this point. And don't even worry about getting close enough to use a, a pistol. Just focus on getting uh, the shots when you can with the rifle. Take advantage of that reach. That would be my advice. Something over there? No. I'm just seeing things. Wishful thinking. Yeah. Now, just because you can see an area over here doesn't mean it's going to actually render in any animals. Uh, there is a certain draw distance, something like 400 meters. Anything past that, you're not you're going to see the uh, basic trees and things like that, but you're not going to see any animals over there. Once you start seeing smaller uh, vegetation on the ground, that's an indication that you're within draw distance of animals. So uh, you, there's no point in really staring way off over there looking for stuff that's way, way out there. Um, stick to, stick to things that are probably about from here to, yeah, probably about from here to there. Uh, start seeing these little, uh, these little trees popping up here. Um, yeah, and a little, uh, bunches of grass, these bushes. Uh, that's, that's a good indication that if there is an animal, it will be drawn in at that distance. So, oh, what we got here? We got a, got a bear. Uh, I don't have a ammo type that will, uh, take the bear out. Yeah, he's gonna move. I got another one over here too. Just it just made a break for it. I don't know if you saw it or not. But there was one up here that just made a move. There he is. Calm. Yeah. So we would need ammo type seven, and what we have right now, we can double check. But uh, it's two to six, so that would be an unethical ammo type to use. The only reason why they're not running right now is if if the wind was going the opposite direction, they would be gone. They would have been gone before we even came down from the cabin because they have really good sense of smell. And they're traveling, so they're going from one need zone to another. They both probably are traveling, if I had to had to guess. And you won't know, you won't be able to tell what state of mind they're in. That again is a skill to. Uh, see that they're calm or they're alert or that they're whatever but you will get uh, to see what uh, the five medium oh that's a resting zone the five medium indicates their trophy rating you will be able to see that and six so I would pick the six if I had to shoot one of these two I'd go for the six because they're both males and that one's going to give me a, a better uh, score if I had to pick one uh, still both of them are going to be seven ammunition because they're both black bears. And you won't get that little trophy icon at the bottom right either. But uh, let's go ahead and move through the area here. You should bleat collar. Maybe you'll get a response. I'm not sure if it works or not, but uh, I've always done it. Ever since the, uh, the Hunter Classic. Very occasionally I'll throw out a couple calls. Just to see if anything happens. I don't know when when I do get a call back. I don't know if it was just happenstance, or if it was uh, because of me actually doing the call. But uh, hey, makes me feel better about life. Black tail deer heading the way that I uh, the scent is not correct, but it's at least it's not heading back towards the bear. And uh, if it goes that way, we'll be okay with our scent. So let's follow this one. Kind of interested in this. And uh, when we find some some droppings here, we'll uh. Get an idea of how fast or slow we need to be moving. Because if... Uh... Okay, it's close. It's close. I'm going to let it calm down a little bit. It might have been coming back towards me because of the collar, if it was that close. It's up there somewhere. And it, it heard me. So I kind of want to... If I can do this, I'm going to probably go for this tree right here. This little tree. Kind of tuck back into it. Oh, something's coming. Here it comes. She's running to the call. I can't really get a good shot at her. There's too much stuff in the way. But she turned at the last second. I think I got a yeah, I got a I got a long shot. I can see the blood from here. Normally I would um wait to see if there's a buck that came down with her 
but the fact that she was kept going this way towards where my, basically the direction where my scent was going and she was so close I was afraid she was going to spook so I wanted to get at least her and then I can come back for more but it looks like she might have been traveling alone I don't see well there's some white tracks up here what are those those kind of look like coyote tracks all right well she didn't get far because that's a See if I can get the blood. I got a track. There it is. Okay. I had a track sort of over top of the blood. Sometimes that happens. If that happens, just go find the other splotch of blood wherever she ran off to. But vital organ hit. So she shouldn't be too far up in this general direction here. Medium blood uh, bleed rate. What I would have wanted to do. I think she came running because I made those two calls cuz she was kind of heading down this direction, not where I was currently. And um so yeah, I think she was reacting to my calls. Hmm. Okay. Maybe that does work. But uh she should yeah, I see her body up here. It's just past this uh disturbed vegetation. I don't know if you guys can see it, but yeah, there she is. So let's get up here. Harvest her and uh, continue our hunt. See if we can get maybe another one or two before the tutorial's over. And by then, I hope you guys have a pretty good... Uh, I'm going to hit R to reload. You guys have a pretty good idea. What the hell was that? Oh, yeah. It was a duck. If it walks like a duck and talks like a duck, it must be a duck. All right. Here we go. Yeah, so she. you can see how she just turned. Right there is a, the exact position she was in when, I, when my... Uh, round impacted uh, so she was just turning I initially wanted to take the shot here but she went like this and uh, yeah she went like that still a great shot right in the middle of that right lung um, so black tail deer class 4 female the weight the fur type tracking distance how far she ran after the the, the shot difficulty tri trivial she's easy obviously uh, trophy type none Trophy organs none because she's not a buck. So, uh, no, uh, no trophy rating. I'm not getting bronze, silver, gold, diamond, anything like that. Harvest check. So we got all the check marks. So if this was a buck, we'd get full maximum points for the trophy rating. Uh, proper ammo used. Yeah. Uh, two sh uh, two shots or less. Check. Intact trophy organs. Yeah. That's actually NA, but hit one vital organ or more. Yeah. So the vital organs are going to be your heart, both your lungs, and I believe the liver. Um, stomach and intestines are not. And depending on the animal, sometimes the brain is okay to hit. Other times not. In deer, you don't want to be doing headshots because you're going to destroy the, uh, trophy, uh, the trophy organ. Other animals, uh, headshot, not a big deal. Like the the new map of Mississippi Acres, you can do uh, alligator headshots and, and hit hit the brain and, and you're fine. But uh, that's where we're at. Shows uh, exactly what we hit. If you had another shot, you could click on that and it would show the other trajectory along with the position the animal was in. Um, shows exactly what we used, the distance we shot it from. We can taxidermize this and have it stuffed if we want to put it on display in our lodge. If not, you can always save the harvest. If you want, you know, you can do it later. Uh, this is our experience we get from it, the cash, and the session score. So there we go. All right. Wonderful. Let's keep moving. I'm going to keep heading towards this other uh, cabin, and maybe we'll get another. Hopefully we'll get a buck this time. So with these soft point bullets, you need to be a little bit more careful about uh, the effective range because the uh, penetration is so low. You're going to need every little bit of power you can get from, from these bullets. All right, there's an opening here. I'm going to just go ahead and glass this, this small little area. Uh, see if I can see anything bopping around in these reeds. That might be a little bit more difficult to see the closer we get. So I have a little bit of elevation, and if there's anything down there, this would probably be the best place for me to check before I go trompsing through that area. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put out one more fleet call my thinking is even if they don't call out if they were about to leave the area where they could hear me or where they would interact with me maybe this 
pulls them back in, sort of boomerangs them back right to me. Um, that's why I kind of like to do it. It doesn't hurt anything, that's for sure. So you don't need to keep blasting it nonstop as you walk around. One's enough. And we got some tracks up here, so we'll definitely check on those. Again, I'm just checking again. Now that I have a little bit of a different angle, it might reveal something that was maybe hidden barely by a tree. Okay. Again, just checking these areas. Looks like a nice spot for deer to hang out. Yeah, this is... Oh, yeah, this is a rest zone, I think. Oh, there we go. Okay, she's coming over. She was coming over. She's attentive. Let's see if we can bring her in a little bit closer. There we go. Glad that I was looking. Because she was being quiet. Okay. I want to wait. I want to try to wait for her to get out of the reeds, if possible. Um, Try to back up. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to... Prone out. That's not prone. That's standing up. Let's prone out. Back ourselves into these. Into this tree. Now, normally with those, they're a lot less difficult to deal with. If it was a buck. Okay, I can hear her. I can't see her, so I'm going to stand up and I should be hidden. I am well hidden. Now I'm in this bush. You can see my visibility's gone. So I should be able, and the wind's good. I should be able to get her right into this red area. Uh, these flowers. Now, if she stops there, that's going to be a good shot. All right, stop, stop, stop right there. Could take the shot right there while she's moving, but ideally. She should be done for. I'm just going to keep an eye on her as she runs. She definitely hurt, and I think she just went down. Okay. All right. Look around, see if anything else is bouncing around. Do the gunshot. Always check the area because you, sometimes you'll startle stuff and they'll come running towards you and or into a favorable position. Um, you never know. Things will be coming out of the woodwork sometimes. All right, so this is our blood here. Large, large pool of it. And we know she ran this way, so we know where she's at. You can see in this long grass, you can really see a nice trail as well. It's pretty cool. Yeah, she didn't go very far. It's definitely going to be the left lung. Now, the question is, did it actually penetrate far enough to the uh, to the right lung? Since it's a soft ammo, I'm guessing probably not. The expansion's pretty good, but uh, I'm guessing it didn't make it to the right lung. Let's find out. Yeah. So, you can see how, at, even at that range, it barely... It didn't really, it didn't even make it halfway through her. Now, if this was a polymer, it'd be all the way over here. It'd be like over here. And uh, you'd have a double lung shot. All right, well, let's keep hunting. Let's see if we can find another one. Okay, I'm going to give a call out just to see if I get any type of reaction. That was loud. I hear something. I hear footsteps behind me. Coming right up through the through the trees. Heart shot. I don't know how good of a shot that was. But I could hear it before I saw it. She was following my uh my call. Again, quietly. Good set of headphones goes a long way in this game. Yeah, that's not the best shot. It was a frontal shot. Um, I think I was above the heart. So. Give her time to bleed out a little bit more. Let's see. Yeah, when she does die, there should be a uh, pressure indicator over here. But right now, it's going to be very low. I think it's going to be a low or very low bleed rate. Probably very low. Yeah, very low. As you can see, it's it's just a pain to have to track an animal so far because oh here he's standing up right there. He's gonna run. Run away.
Yeah, these should be very fresh again. But at least we have the rain coming in, which is going to help uh, mask our movement as we kind of try to catch up with uh, with her a little bit. Uh, scent is going in the correct direction, so that's good. Let's see what her pace is right now. Wait, is that her? That's her. She's still going. A little bit high. I don't know why I went high because I should have went straight for the heart because well, I don't think it's going to make it to the heart. I've had easier shots with the heart. Yeah. Zero to 25. So she's about to, she's about to drop. Um, if I can't make it to the heart with the frontal, with the, uh, soft point ammo, there's no way I'm making it to the lungs. Okay. We just might as well chase her down at this point. Uh, cause she's, she's about to drop. I think the shot itself, there she is. There she is. Finally. Finally. All right. Now we're, it's going to be interesting to see the ballistics to see how little this penetrated both of these shots. And I'm really interested to see where the second shot went. Cause I know it went above the heart. I know it didn't make it to the lungs. Oops. That was not E. That was R. But. Reloading is always a good idea. Okay, here we go. Both of them are flesh. Yeah. So, yeah, you can see that if that was a polymer tip bullet, that would have hit the lung. It would have hit the, uh, yeah, the left lung. But it look how little it penetrated into the body. Look at that. And the heart's back here. It's not even halfway to the heart. So, yeah. The next one, again, even less... Like it barely touched it. These these rounds are just get out of these soft point bullet rounds as quickly as possible. I might as well went with a headshot, honestly, because I wasn't going to hit vital organs anyway. The only chance you have is a is a, a side shot into one of the lungs. That's the only way. Um, straight on, it, I just can't see it working, even with a small doe like that. All right. Let's see if we can get another one. Where are we at now? Do I want to fast travel? Probably want to fast travel. Uh, where do I want to go? Mm, let's see here. Let's head over here again. Oh, you know what? Let's just go down to Balmont Lake and... Uh, yeah, let's go down that way. So let's head on down to the lake. Uh, you know what? Let's let's head over this way. And then we'll head on down to the main lake from, from there. So, yeah, let's go this way. Away from uh, the hunting pressure. And when we start going around the lake, the uh, wind will be in the correct direction. So, yeah, we might as well head down here. Hello. It's a warning call from a bear. Wow. That bear is very aware. Because the wind is blowing in the right direction. And I don't think I'm making a whole ton of sound over here. But yeah, black bear are tough to uh, get super close to. The best way to do that is get a collar. Find an area where there's a bear. Set up uh, like a stand up here. Like if I was wanting to hunt that bear, I'd probably move back a little bit. Put a tree stand up or a tripod stand or something or a hunting blind. And then use... Uh, um, I hear something. This direction. I'm moving up this way. It's definitely one of these deer. Do I have anywhere to go? I can back up a little bit. I can probably call it in and you. It should make a beeline for me. I'm gonna try to get back into this little tree. If possible. Yep, it gave me it gave me cover. Good. Okay. Just enough. So if it comes out. Now the problem is when I do this collar, it's going to come right where the collar's at. It's going to be f walking straight towards me. Again, we're back to taking a frontal shot.
check behind you too. It's coming. I put on a little scent eliminator just for good measure. Nine. You normally keep it at zero. For some reason I put it at nine. Okay. One coming up from behind. That's a doe. I might take that one. It's a profile shot. If it stops. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Don't turn. Don't turn. Uh, that's not what I wanted. I wanted to keep turning. Okay. Nah, that was low. That was low. Now I'm going to watch and see if this one busts out of the cover here. Maybe it gives me another uh, another chance to take a shot. All right, let's head on down here. See if this was a good shot or a bad shot. If it hit the lung, it hit the back part of the lung. I don't think I hit it with the second shot. Well, let's take a look, see where I hit. Stomach, yeah, I had a feeling. Yeah, not considered a uh, vital organ. So, anyway. That's going to be a bear warning call, I bet you. Where you at, bear warning call? Slight opening over here. All right, I kind of like this area. I'm going to put out a call. See what I can see. This feels like an area where I have a lot of... I cleared what pretty much is behind me. And I'm going to put out a little call here. Yeah, see if we get any, any reaction. There might be something in these, uh, this vegetation in front of us. Maybe comes out. It's hard to say. Feel like I'm making a lot of noise, but if you look at the uh, sound meter, it's, it's absolutely nothing. So swiveling around like this is is not penalizing you. Don't be afraid to do that once you uh, get hidden away. I hear something coming straight through this. Yep, right where we thought. Oh, and it's a big old buck. Let's make sure we connect with this one. There's a doe. It's odd that the buck came out first. Can't really get a good shot at this one. Turn, baby, turn. Heart shot will not connect. Oh, is it another buck? It is. Turn. I 
need him to turn. I can get him to turn. I think maybe I did good on that one. I think it was about as good as I was going to get. Um, I was surrounded, and I was about to get made. So I kind of had to take the shot. If I had polymer <laughs> polymer rounds, no worries. There's a doe running around over there. Hopefully we get good, good blood on this. I'm not seeing... Yeah, it's not the best. But uh, the best I could do. Well, I don't know. Maybe. That looks pretty good. Yep. Yep, I'll take that. Vital organ. All right. We'll take it. So he's up here somewhere. Uh, there's one down here. I don't know if... Yeah, that's the same one, isn't it? What the hell is that? It's a pissed off uh, white tail is what that is. All right. So... I think this is the first one I shot, I think. Oh, wow. Yep, I, I barely got it in there. I wanted to avoid the uh, the shoulder bone here. The the, yeah. All right, I'll take it. Not a bad uh, not a bad uh, kill there. Not bad at all. Yeah. So right there was my angle. I sort of threaded the needle a little bit there, and yeah, I'm pretty happy with that, especially using the uh, soft point. All right, we'll go ahead and keep that one. Let's go see if we can locate the other one. See if we get a double. It looks like maybe there's a double here. Because it looks a little offset. The sort. Coming back out for more. All right, good. Well, I did get a long shot on that. Or I did get a uh, organ shot on that. He was hurting. You could see that he was uh, struggling, so... All right. So the first one was uh oh I missed on the first one. Yeah, I'm oh I hit him in the butt. Yeah. But then the second one. That that was the that sealed the deal right there. So we got we got all of our checks because of that second shot. Um again, take that one. All right guys. Well, I hope this little tutorial helped you. I try to make it as relevant to a new player as possible, not using all my extra toys. And even I try to even use the same ammo type that you're going to probably struggle with for the first couple kills. As soon as you can, unlock an outpost and go buy yourself some polymer tip bullets because for the 243, soft tip just sucks. All right. Thanks for watching. If you uh, enjoy this, please leave it a like. If you want to see more Hunter content, go ahead and subscribe. See you guys in the next one. Y'all take care.